Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Paul Mackay and today I'm going to be talking to you about Ilford's fastest black and white film. Now they claim it's the fastest black and white film in the world, but we'll dig into that. Whether you are new to film photography or a long time analog enthusiast, our channel covers all things film, from tips and tricks, film reviews to how to videos. Subscribe now and keep those notifications turned on so that you never miss a beat. Happy shooting! So today we're talking about Ilford Delta, specifically Ilford Delta 3200. Now you may be familiar with Delta 100, with 400, and clearly this is the fastest sibling. 3200 is the advertised box speed. Now, of course, Ilford say this is the fastest black and white film in the world. Kodak say, what about our P3200? But then actually when you look at the box on P3200, it says that it's a 1600 black and white film that you can push to 3200. Who knows? Because one of the other things that you can do with this one is even in the box, Ilford have developing times up to 12,500 ISO. So pushed another two stops versus 3200. Clearly, we are talking about films that work really well in low light which of course is why I've gifted it to you in the Wonder Box this month in particular. I'm not always that generous. I remember putting in a 0.8, I think, last uh, winter, just a real test. But this is a brilliant film for this time of year because of its high ISO. Now, we've been through this a few times where we've talked about what happens when you gain speed with a higher ISO. You tend to lose some image quality. You tend to get a bit more grain. What folks say about this film in particular is that although the grain is more noticeable, it is still a beautiful character, it's not overwhelming, it doesn't look really muddy or noisy. Ilford say that it has very compact grain, but of course the caveat is for the film speed. Delta 3200 will always look slightly more grainy with slightly less resolving power than Delta 100. That's just the trade-off. So what do you use high speed films for? Clearly, you can use them in much lower light than Delta 100, Delta 400. Your camera, if it has a 3200 setting, will immediately relax <laughs> in low light, knowing that it can still shoot at reasonable shutter speeds. It can still shoot without having to necessarily go fully wide open on the aperture to let in the most light. And then you can just relax and enjoy. So for me, I shoot this kind of film at family dinners, if you're in the pub, walks when it's already turning dark, anything that you want to make sure you can try and capture some detail. It's very popular for band photos. A lot of photographers who shoot gigs love this film because you can obviously take it into a gig with lots of the dark and the shadows. You can still be used when the bright lights come on. It's not gonna be totally blown out straight away, but it gives you a brilliant, brilliant amount of flexibility. What folks say about it is that it does a brilliant job in low light, which really is its reason for being. Now, of course, that's not the only reason. Other reasons you might want a very sensitive film is because you need to use a really fast shutter speed. So for motorsports, this was the type of film that used to be used for shooting racing sports, anything like that. Even premiership football, if you're gonna do black and white, or kids football down at the park, if, you're, uh, if your kid's in little kickers or whatever it is. This is a great film for that because you can set your camera to have a super fast shutter speed. It won't let in much light, but what light it does let in, this film will pick up. The other thing that is worth mentioning with such a sensitive film is airports, travels, and x-rays. So Emma's done a brilliant blog that you can see on our website about traveling with film. And the very fast synopsis is, it's often okay, but the best thing to do is to have your film hand-checked. You may have seen these kind of stickers around. They'll often say, film can only be hand-checked over ISO 800, etc. Now that's not actually true. Most airports and most airport security teams should be okay with hand checking your film regardless of its speed. But this is definitely a film where I would kick up more of a fuss if they weren't going to do it straight away. Because it is so sensitive, the x-rays are much more likely to damage this film than Velvia 50 or Delta 100, anything like that. So it is worth knowing that if you're going to go through uh, anything that might x-ray, CT, scan, otherwise damage your film, this is going to be slightly more sensitive to that kind of radiation. Equally, actually, even being in an airplane, when you're flying above a large part of the Earth's atmosphere, you get a lot more of the cosmic radiation coming in anyway from space. That in itself can be enough to damage something this sensitive. So it's not the perfect travel film, necessarily, although, of course, it being Ilford, fantastic quality. They've put a lot of steps in place to minimise that impact, and I'm sure a lot of it will be fine. 
so don't worry too much. Worst comes to worst, it's likely you might see a bit more grain and slight fading versus what would be a fresh studio shot, but ultimately the point of this film is that you'll be able to get photos, film photos, that otherwise you're just in dreamland of being able to try and capture with a, a slower speed film. It's also makes me laugh whenever I look back at documents from the 50s, the 60s, even the 70s that describe ISO 50 or ISO 100 films as the fast speed option. <laughs> so, you know, Kodachrome was ISO 25, I think, and that was seen as fairly, yeah, okay, middle of the, middle of the road. Um, if you told somebody that you could shoot 12, 500 ISO and get amazing results without overwhelming brain, they would have uh, probably paid quite a lot of money for that at the time. So a really lovely film, a gorgeous film for this time of year. As I say, I'm going to be going to pubs, restaurants, family nights, that kind of stuff, and capturing some gorgeous film photos in environments I wouldn't otherwise be able to do. I'm going to be using an SLR so that I have better control over the exposure. Also ones that can read up to 1600. Again, because of historically, you're talking 15, 25, 50, 100 as being the traditional speed. Old cameras might not have a 1600, 1300 setting, but you can adapt within that and understand how to get the best out of that film. Please do shoot it, enjoy it, let me know what you think, and I'll see you again soon.